He's so driven. He just wants to win. He wanted to be the best at what he was doing. At the age of five or six, his goal was to make the NHL. He wasn't cocky, but it was just something that he was going to do. He, he wrote, uh, remember my name because one day I will be in the NHL. No one really had to push me to, to work hard and to find that determination. That was just one of the things that came natural. The first indication was when he got his first hockey skates from my parents at Christmas. Like, he would not take those things off. He couldn't skate yet. He's like three years old. And he's running around the, the, the house with a pair of skates on and stick handy with this little puck. Somebody said, just build the rink out there. So I, I started on a you know small piece of ice the one year, just kept on growing as the kids got older. For some days in Winnipeg, like minus 30 something, he would spend hours and hours, and I was so concerned about his feet and his face and his hands, and he was just nonstop, and he truly, you could tell he was passionate about it. He asked me if I wanted to come over for a sleepover, so like any typical 11-year-old, we, I went over there and I, I'm like, okay, mini sticks, he's got his outdoor rink, bring my skates. So I ended up going over there, open the door, and there he is with jock jams blaring, saying, all right, put your stuff on, we're going downstairs for a workout. And we did push-ups, sit-ups, chin-ups. He had a net downstairs, we shot hundreds and hundreds of pucks, and by the end of it, it was like an hour workout, I was dead, and he was just like, all right, let's go eat, and we're going on the rink. And it's like, well, holy crap, man, like, let's, let's settle down here, let's, let's relax. It was a bit obsessive, I guess. But you could say it was kind of my uh, blessing and my curse, almost, that uh, I was obsessed. If he couldn't hit a top corner, as an example, or he missed it, you could see him on his rink for five, six hours at night, parents having to pull him off the rink because he was out there trying to do what he didn't do in a game. People wondered, thought I was a little bit weird, a little bit crazy, but uh, I don't know, I guess it's some of those qualities that made me better over the years. He wasn't like an oddball. Sometimes he thinks, well, it sounds like I'm a geek, but it, you know, he was a hockey geek, but he was also be able to interact with everybody. He wasn't a guy that just sat in the corner and, and didn't talk to anybody. He was a very, very likable guy that was so competitive and had such great leadership qualities. You just kind of followed him. The Chicago Blackhawks proudly select Jonathan Taves. They have a great young leader in Captain Jonathan Taves. Uh, he leads, they follow. He's a special, special person. He gets people to eventually end up following uh, what he's doing because he's either a step ahead of the game or he's just so smart that people will gravitate towards what he's doing. The best leader in the National Hockey League. They call him Captain Serious, but believe me, he has a lighter side. I don't know if it was the name that got to him, the Captain Serious name or what, but uh, he's kind of knocked that off a little bit. He tends to joke around a little bit more and, and have a little bit more fun. I just learned to apply that when it's needed and not all the time. When we were younger and he said something to him, you might be able to rattle him pretty easily. It doesn't happen as easy now, so he's kind of kicked that name to the curb a bit. For your own sanity, it doesn't make sense to always be go, go, go and kind of mission-oriented all the time, but just learn that enjoying the game and, and taking things lightly can be a part of being successful as well.